Hey, welcome back. So today we are going to finish up this uh, three-part series on crushing a can with end cloth. The first two videos basically got everything all set up. In the last video, I was hoping to get to the end cloth piece of it, but this uh, took quite a while to get everything all set up, to make the can, to uh, do the UVs, put it into Photoshop, apply the materials, and all that type of stuff. So. Uh, this is the last video. It's a little over 20 minutes long, and uh, we'll go ahead and get that finished up. Again, um, if you haven't seen the other videos, you can visit my YouTube channel, Paul Fritz Animation, and watch video number one and video number two in this series. And you can also check out some of my other video series on Unreal Engine and Unity. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so now we've got uh, our texture on. Let's go ahead and move on to getting our um, getting everything kind of set up for getting this done. So the first thing I think we want to do is let's go ahead and name a few things in here because we haven't done that yet. And we'll just call this, oh, wow, soda can. Okay. Um, we don't need those views. And then this, I'll just go ahead and name it table, just so I know what it is. All right, the other thing is with the, um, with the can selected, let's go ahead and make sure we've got our uh, delete by type history. Let's delete our history on this. And now I think we're ready to go ahead and get our end cloth all set up on here. So what we're gonna do is with the can selected, we're going to go into FX right up here. We're going to go into end cloth, can selected, we're going to create an end cloth. When we do that, we're going to lose our texture. And that's okay, we'll come back to that in a second. Now we're going to select the table or the plane down here, whatever you want to call it, and go to end cloth and we're going to create a passive collider. So now we have the can and we have the uh, table all set up. So let's go ahead and put our texture back on just so that we can go through the process of doing that and you can see how it works. All right, so first thing I want to do is with my, oops, that's the wrong thing, with my UV selected, where are my UVs? Let's go ahead and just open those up. I lost them. There we go. Select the can. And with the UV selected, we know that these right here are Go to UV shell, select them. That's the can texture piece. And so what we want to do is back here with our hyper shader open. This is the can material, the main material. So with those selected, we right click and hold and we're going to assign material to selection. And then with everything else, we're just going to do a marquee select. All the way up to that very edge right there. And then hold the marquee and select these as well. And we're going to do that same thing for the metal. Right click and hold, assign material to selection. And now, if we look again, our material is back on there. So let's go ahead and save this. I'm going to go ahead and close the UV editor and the hyper shader. We might need to have them open again later on, but let's just get them out of the way for right now. Okay, so we have all of that put on here. And if we take a look at what we have, okay? Um, when we first set this up, we've got our end cloth shape, okay? End cloth shape one. And in here, there are several things that we want to talk about. There are presets. So we click on the presets. These are your end cloth presets that are already been set up for you. And there's different materials that are in here and you can kind of come in and you can play around with each one of these. Now, if you hover over it, you'll notice that this other window opens up over here. We can replace the material completely with this, uh, these dynamics. We can uh, just have certain areas of our model selected so that those just those areas are selected. And we can also do some sort of a blend uh, by percentage here. And that means it's original material uh, st settings with the um, presets for this material. And by material, I mean um, these are settings. It's not really like a physical material. 
these are settings that are changed um, in the way that uh, our properties work for this uh, end cloth, okay? So like airbag would be, uh, it's set up so that it behaves like an airbag, similar to the way an airbag would uh, kind of be the way you would expect it to be as far as uh, being able to bend and be shaped real easily, whereas concrete, which is a choice on here, is not so easy to bend and shape and uh, would probably be more like a crushing or breaking type material, okay? So that's something to think about. It's not actually the physical material that's on the outer side of it that we just got done doing. This is a behavior more than it's actual material. It behaves like this type of object. The other thing we can do is we can come in here to our dynamic properties and we can also play around with some of these settings. Now for the demonstration picture that I had at the very beginning, all I did was I came in and I played around with the deform resistance a little bit uh, and adjusted it to a point where it resisted enough to make it look like it was crushed can. And the reason why I'm talking about these different things is um, every time you change a setting in here, Maya is going to do a simulation calculation. And that's what's occurring down here down at the bottom of my timeline. When I open this up, you see there was a timeline, and this blue line is how we have our settings. Right now, I've gone in and I've changed it to 1,000 from the default of 120. A lot more than I need for this simulation, but I just pushed it out a little ways. And then down here along the bottom, on top of that blue line, there's this red line that's slowly moving to the right, and it is doing the calculation. Now, this is probably, I could probably change this back down to something like two or 300 frames, um, and it wouldn't keep calculating as it's doing right now. Uh, but um, I just kind of pushed it out to kind of s demonstrate. You can see how long this takes to go through these simulations. Now, if I hit play with it on the default, everything is just default. I haven't changed anything yet. If I hit play, you see that the can crushes down and we get this kind of uh, behavior where the top starts to pop up like that and it kind of looks a little strange. And if I click off of it, you can... Yeah, it's not really click off of it. But anyway... Um, so you can kind of get to see how it's popped up right there and we get this kind of crushing effect. Um, not exactly the look that we're going for, I don't think, but if we ran this simulation out far enough, so if I clicked up here and kind of grabbed it a little bit and along the timeline, just kind of drug it, you can kind of, kind of get it to a point where it's set that you're kind of happy with. Right now it's moving very fast. If you right click on this timeline, double check to make sure that your playback speed is set to real time. Uh, these other settings makes it kind of run really fast. And you can also uh, go in and you can even change your uh, playback speed to uh, um, run even slower if you wanted to. And that would be back up under. Uh, let's see, I don't see it up in here. Yeah, we'd have to change to a different menu. Let's see here. Yeah, we have to change to a different menu to get to it from here. We're not going to do that right now. All right, so, um, and it's also right now set at 20 frames per, 24 frames per second. You can kind of play around with some of this stuff. Um, let's see my preferences. So I could go into preferences as well. Maybe I'll show this to you real quick. Settings. Um, playback, here we go. So um, my time slider, my playback, I can adjust my of settings in here as well to kind of change how fast this plays back for this scenario. Um, of course, times two. Here's half speed right here. So if I wanted to slow it down a little bit, um, see, I have to have to hit save in order for it to take effect. And then if I go back to the beginning and hit play, you can see it moves much slower. It gives me a little bit more time to react. Um, it just really depends on how you want to have things set up. I'm going to put that back to regular speed. All right. And um, so that's kind of the basics for getting all this set up. And you're going to kind of play around with it until you get the appearance of how you want the can to look. Now, with the can select an object mode, going back to my properties, um, what I'm going to do is because every time you click the simulation button, you change something, this recalculates down here. And depending on how fast your processor is, this could take a while for it to calculate. And again, um, I have it out quite a ways. 
But if I go to a preset for something like, um, let's see, well, leather is going to kind of give it some weird effect. Maybe like silk, if I replace it, you can see that it's going to pop back to the beginning. It gives us this kind of um, introduction down here about what this material is going to do, some things you kind of look for, give you a little bit of advice about going in, and uh, you may need to increase the damper value because it'll try to spring up and bounce around on you and kind of give you some weird behaviors. And depending on how many of the settings were adjusted for selecting it to create it to have a silk behavior, um, it could take a while for this line down here to move. But if I hit play now, it'll run out to I got 40, almost 40 frames. Let's see how it behaves. You can see it kind of takes a little bit longer. And then when I run out of time, it stops right there. I'm going to go ahead and pause and let it calculate out to probably about two or 300 frames. That's probably about how far out this, this can needs for a simulation. And you don't really need a thousand frames. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this for a second and I'll start it back up once I have enough timeline here and we can kind of see how it behaves. Okay, so here is the finished simulation. I ran it out to about 211 frames. I could go further, of course, it's going to keep calculating it until this is almost completely flat. But silk, as you can see, doesn't really give us the look that we want. I do like the way that it is uh, kind of crushing on the outside, kind of a little bit more realistic. Um, but uh, again, if I go backwards and hit the play button, you can kind of see the effect here. The can starts to cave in at the top because the material doesn't have any resistance up along the top there. And as I run it out towards the end of the simulation, you get a feel for what it looks like there. All right, so um, some other choices that we have in here, things like heavy denim. Materials are going to kind of behave the same way. Leather, all of these, even though they seem like they might work pretty well, because of the way the can is structured, if you think about the cylinder, if you had a cylinder, come on, oh, hit the rewind button. That's all right, we'll go backwards. So if you think about a cylinder and the way the cylinder works, if there is no structural integrity here, it is going to collapse in on itself. And we're going to get this kind of... Uh, behavior where we start to see the top collapsing in. So most of these materials that are here in the presets are not really going to work too well for us for something like this. Um, I don't know, maybe plastic shell, you can try putty. Okay, we're going to try plastic shell, I think. And um, I know there's one down here that says soft sheet metal. We're not going to try that. It's going to take very, very long for it to calculate the process. and. Uh, that would be something to do um, outside of this, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and go to plastic shell. I'm going to do replace. And let's see what that does uh, for us. And again, I will uh, bring that back up here in a few minutes once I've got enough time calculated for us to be able to kind of see what it looks like. Okay, so I've um, got the uh, plastic one started a little bit down here looks like we're almost at 100 if i hit play uh not a lot's going to happen you can see that it's not collapsing at all i mean if i let it play a little bit longer and that's because we would have to uh, play around with things like the deform resistance the rigidity on this one um, compression resistance and that is something you can certainly do, but because these simulations take a very long time and I'm trying to uh, kind of just show a couple different approaches to this, I'm not going to go ahead and do that right now. Um, but for being able to kind of play around with it, and it's the same with the metal. The uh, metal one on the presets, you could also change the presets for it as well. Um, <clears throat> there's a soft sheet metal one here, and you can play around with it until you get it to the B about the point where you want it to be, but you also have to realize, you know, there has to be something that's going to cause it to crush. And um, what we're going to do is we're trying to get it to crush under its own weight. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off these various um, I'm going to control Z until I get these out of there and kind of clear out so we're at here. Okay, I believe we are back to normal. It looks like it is because it's going pretty fast down there now. Let's go back to object mode. Okay, and let's see here. Let me hit play real quick. Whoa. Okay, yes, that was probably what was expected because I had it sitting right here. You can see once the simulation catches up to where your time frame is, it's going to automatically do that for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play around with the deform resistance right here um, and nothing else just to try to get it to uh, keep the solidness of the can a little bit, but it still allow it to fall under its own weight. And it may not give us the exact um, look that we want, but we're also thinking about uh, time, time frame here as well. So deform resistance, Try 0.2 on that. As you can see, it's restarted my calculation. It's moving pretty fast though, so um, let's see here. Give me a chance to catch up. Okay, and right around frame 73, it looks like it completely crushed the can. And we got this weird kind of thing going to happen that's happening here in the middle because of the way it uh, performed. And we back out just a little bit. This little button right here, I'm pushing changes us one frame at a time. And kind of see how it's behaving. We got this kind of cap here that we don't really want. So let's try changing our deform resistance even higher. Turn off the grid there in the middle. Need some thicker rings. You can see it's looking like it was really melting down in here. But what I want to have is some layering, kind of like we would have with a can when you crush it straight down. And you can also lay the can sideways and kind of change some of the different directions uh, of the can, kind of experiment with it, see how it's going to behave. You can see, see by changing the deform resistance, it really changes the behavior here. The top of the can isn't uh, bellowing out like it was before. And we are getting some kind of piling rings on top of each other. But it's also taking longer to crush. Remember early on it was crushing down around here. It's just kind of forming too nice and neat. I think um, this isn't going to really work with what we're looking for. Well, I'm going to give it a little bit of rigidity as well. Let's try point zero two or point two. Sorry. See what that will do for us. Okay, it's going to take a little bit longer, quite a bit longer. I'm going to pause and uh, we'll come back once I have a little bit of uh, uh, something to work with. All right, so what I was afraid of, rigidity is not really going to work for us. Um, it's just making the sides of the can too, uh, too rigid for it to be able to crush. I was able to crush that initial little piece because of the taper, but uh, that was all it's going to do. 
So we're going to go ahead and push rigidity down. Something like 002, just to try that out. See if we get anything. All right, so we're starting to see uh, how it looks a little bit. Rigidity may be too low again. Again, as you can see, this is something to kind of play around with until you get a look that you like. But you also gotta think about the amount of time you have available to do this. And I would just play around with these settings until you kind of get uh, what you're looking for. So I'm gonna pause one more time. I'm gonna set put some settings in here um, that will work and kind of show you what uh, the end result is if that's something you wanna try. Okay, so what I ended up doing was uh, I also played around with the bend angle drop off. It was uh, defaulted to zero and then I pushed up the deform resistance to three. Again, you can play around with all of these a little bit just to see what's gonna happen. I run the timeout to about 1100 and this particular simulation, uh, the can is going to end up kind of falling over a little bit. You see, we're starting to get some of these crush points here. And then it starts to tip over. And now it starts to get crushed this direction. And at some point, once you're happy with the way it looks, you can go ahead and stop it. Okay. Not exactly what I was hoping for for this one, but it's not bad. And, you know, again, with modeling, you can always come back in and kind of adjust it a little bit. But we'll leave it the way it is right now so I can show the next piece of this. So once this is done, what we want to do is I want to have it selected. If I hit... Uh, Control D to duplicate it, and then W to pull that out. Now I have a crushed soda can, and I still have my original right here. And if I set it back to the beginning, I can now crush it again. And some of the things you can do to kind of play around with it is, you know, you can adjust the way that it sits on here. You can put it on different surfaces. Take the can a little bit, see how that behaves. The simulation, every time you change it, is going to be a little bit different. And um, you're going to come out with a different kind of variation of how the can is. And again, it's going to take a long time, but you get the idea of how to do this. And then once you kind of have it all set up, you can render it out. And you have your crushed soda can. You can also take it once you've got it and uh, export it as an FBX or you know OBJ and put it into a game scene or into some other model uh, that you want to put into a larger scene. So there you go. That is kind of the basics of how to create a soda can, texture it, and then crush it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it. And uh, you can always check out some of the of my other uh, videos, you can also watch the original starting of this uh, project, so video number one. And with that, and with that, um, hopefully uh, you've got something out of this, and um, like my video, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next time.